South Bucking. We did an exclusive interview today with Representative Dale Falwell. Hey, and Richard. you're running for state treasurer here in North Carolina, is that correct? That's correct. All right. Well, you know, I appreciate you coming on and, and chatting with us. One of the first questions I have for you is uh, a lot of people may not know what a state treasurer does. Well, that's a good question. I think the state treasurer's job is one of the most important elected offices in North Carolina that not many people know about. Mm -hmm. But it directly impacts uh, everybody in North Carolina. Uh, the state treasurer has three main responsibilities. One is to defend the AAA bond rating, which not only lowers the cost of borrowing money at the state level, but uh, tangentially has an effect on what counties have to pay for money and and generally how secure the state is when people are borrowing money for houses. <clears throat> the state treasurer also has a tremendous responsibility for managing one of the largest pools of assets in the United States, which is our $72 billion pension fund, and to make it manage it conservatively and to make it grow. And the third responsibility, which is a little more detailed, is that the state treasurer uh, is the head of the local government commission, which is responsible for issuing all the debt at not only the state level, but the local level. If that weren't enough, the state treasurer sits on the uh, board of the uh, State uh, Department of Public Instruction, the Community College Board, the Chairman of the Banking Commission, many other responsibilities that the state treasurer has. Gosh, that is uh, way more than what I understood that the state treasurer did. I thought all he did was collect the uh, tax revenue come tax time. Well, the you state know. treasurer actually doesn't even do that. Doesn't even do no, that? That's, really? That's the, so most folks may think that. Right, that's the commissioner of revenue. Well, like, I'll uh, tell you what, that's unreal. Well, before we go on more about the state treasury uh, duties and responsibilities, let's get a little bit of background about it, information about you, where, where you're from, what county, and sure. what you've been doing. Well, I'm from, uh, from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, born in Raleigh, but a lifelong resident of Winston-Salem. Uh, I describe my uh, upbringing as poor in resource and rich in opportunity. Okay. <clears throat> and I got to this part, uh, place in my life by... Uh, knowing what I don't know and surrounding myself with people who are smarter than I am. Well, that's that's interesting philosophy and different yeah. background there. All in one gist. Sure. Um, so how many how many uh, terms have you served down in the, the state house? Well, this is my second term in the uh, House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. I was uh, honored as a at the end of my freshman term to be elected by my colleagues as the Joint Caucus Leader, which is as I describe, is the mule that goes between the House and the Senate. Uh, <clears throat> and I want to say for your audience that uh, conservatives and Republicans uh, really had a great year in Raleigh uh, this year. Uh, even though we did not stop some things that we believe in, we were able every hour of every day really to make a difference in legislation. Uh, my uh, previous uh, experience uh, before being elected to the House of Representatives was uh, being elected uh, for eight years, serving on the school board in eight different years on the Forsyth County Board of Education in Winston-Salem. Well, that's a, that's a deep background. You've had uh, experience in uh, you know, a, a facet of issues there. But let's go back to one thing you did say is some of the issues you didn't get uh, accomplished down there as far as passing. What were some of those issues that you brought to light that that's just failed to make law or get legislation behind it? Well, I think any issue regarding illegal immigration failed. Uh, we couldn't, couldn't, those bills would not be heard, couldn't get them go over from one house chamber to the other. Uh, that, from a, from a policy standpoint and from a conservative standpoint, the illegal immigration uh, bills not being heard were important. Um, the bill that I filed was called Modify the School Admissions Policy. Mm -hmm. Your viewers may not realize, but if they have a kindergartner or they have a grandchild who's a kindergartner, when they present that person to Buncombe County Schools or any school district in North Carolina, most likely that parent has to take off work, go get a raised seal birth certificate, a copy of an immunization record, and they have to have all that paperwork in place before they're allowed to enter public school. If you're here illegally, basically all you have to do is maybe go buy a Bible and write the child's name and date of birth on the front page. You're kidding me. No. That's, that's the way it is in Forsyth County. And when people talk about illegal immigration, you know, if something's happening at your house and you don't think the police are going to get there in time, uh, then you have to defend yourself. And I think it's the responsibility of every elected official at any level to have some solution to the number one crisis in North Carolina, in my opinion, next to illiteracy, is illegal immigration. 
understand that. Well, that that is an issue I think that is, is needs to be addressed, especially in the uh, up and coming election. Um, other than uh, the illegal immigration uh, that that burdens the school system, what else have you found that's cost the taxpayers on account of the influx of mm -hmm. illegal immigrants here in North Carolina? Well, illegal immigration has 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 done three major things. One is it's put an unbelievable burden on our health care system where our seniors are actually, when you look at a buffet line in a K&W, you know, by the time the, some of our seniors get to the end of the buffet line, there's nothing there to eat uh, because there's so many people drawing down on our, on our social services system. It's putting a real burden on the education system. Over the summer months, last summer in Forsyth County, 74% of all the new entrants into our school system didn't speak English. 74%. And secondly, it's manifesting itself in our criminal justice system, which is putting incredible strains on your sheriff, your police chief, law enforcement officers across North Carolina. Well, you know, I think everyone out there, the issues are, are hitting the forefront right now on sure. illegal immigration. Um, so hopefully we can get some legislation to pass, uh, you know, and, and work on that. I think, uh, you know, there's a there's a program called the 287 program. Sure. What what do you know about that, and, and, and do you know any good examples it's working or not working at this time? Sure. Actually, uh, Sheriff Pendergraf in Mecklenburg County, uh, a few miles from here, has been one of the uh, leaders in the 287G program, and he is so recognized for being a pioneer in that area that he's now taking a job with Homeland Security. Um, what we have to do in North Carolina is we have to reward the right thing and punish those that aren't. And whether it's illegal immigration or any other issue that you might want to talk about, uh, we can't keep having a North Carolina where there are double standards, where if you're one kind of person, you get to get by with everything, and if you're another kind of person, you know, you get handcuffs put on you. Uh, that's not right either. Uh, other issues, maybe in the family values issues, was a bill that I I worked on with Trudy Walland, Representative Walland, uh, from Transylvania County, uh, and your viewers will be shocked to know this. Uh, North Carolina is one of the few states in the United States that does not have an unborn victims bill. Now, the unborn victims bill could mean a lot of things to your viewers, but basically what that says is that a, any person who kills a woman, mainly because she's pregnant, has the opportunity by the district attorney to be charged with a double murder. This happens many, too many times in North Carolina. It's happened twice in Wake County in the last 15 months. Uh, one case is where uh, a mother who had a, a two or three year old child and she was eight months in utero was murdered. In North Carolina, if you kill a woman mainly, or if she's pregnant, the district attorney should have the option of charging that thug with a double murder. Absolutely, that makes sense. It does make sense. It makes and, a lot of sense. On that. I mean, even California has this law. It's called the Lacey Peterson law. And, and Lacey Peterson's father uh, has a different stance than I do as far as the uh, uh, life and the choice uh, issue. But he comes out and would be willing to come to Raleigh and testify that this bill is about murderers and thugs. It's not about pro-life and pro-choice. And that's why we need to get behind Representative Wallen's bill uh, to get something uh, uh, going there. Uh, I tell you, uh, you, you sent a freshman up here this year, Charles Thomas, mm -hmm. uh, to Raleigh. Yes. I had the pleasure of working with him, and he's got a bill that actually made it through the House and is maybe el is eligible for the short session that has to do with illegal immigration and, and driver's license. So, as I said when I started this interview, that every hour of every day, Republicans and conservatives. We're making a difference in Raleigh. Those are a couple.